to show you how to enclose magnets, tiny ones like this, made of rare earth, in a clasp for a necklace. This clasp is magnetic, and I did it all in one fell swoop, in one baking, and Elisa is going to show you an alternate method after I'm done of how to do it in two bakings. So what I did is I start with a piece of clay about the thickness of my finger and three fingers wide is how big this is. You could, I think I will get smaller as I go, but since I just started doing this, my piece is pretty big because I need room to work. <laughs> so I'm going to cut this piece of clay in half, just eyeballing it to try and get it symmetrical to, to the same size. Now the trick with this is these magnets are extremely strong. So the first thing that I did is I took a permanent marker and I marked the outside of this set of magnets so that I know which end repels and which end um, is going to attract. Then I had a really hard time getting two little magnets apart, so I used my blade and I cut right down the middle of them. Right, and then they stick to the to Then the they blade. stick to the blade. <laughs> These are a little tricky, so you, you have to just play with them and, and feel it out. Right. Okay, so now I have a magnet on each side of my blade. <laughs> and I'm going to hold on to one while I peel the other one off. Okay and set them really far apart on your work surface because otherwise they will come flying at you and stick to each other and that's really disorienting when you're trying to work. <laughs> set your blade far away. So now I know the black mark I made on it is on the outside so I'm going to push that side into the piece of clay first and I'm just gonna shove it in there. The clay is gonna distort, that's okay but I'm shoving it down in there and then I'm going to come back and pinch it in with my fingers and then I'm going to start working it on my surface and I'm going to pull this back down so that the bottom edge is flat because that's the side that I want to stick to the other side and then just roll out my fingerprints get my, blade, my skewer and poke a hole from this side Poke a hole back through from that side. May I make my hole a little big because I'm going to string this on some ribbon later. And roll out my fingerprints again and set this up, up like that. Um, I would put it on the baking pan at this point or onto a piece of paper, which is what I baked it on the first time. And it actually did stick right to the baking pan because it's metal. So just set that aside on your work surface that you're going to bake on and then do the other side. Push this side with the black mark into the clay so it comes up around it. Pinch it in. Roll it on your work surface to shut the hole. And then pinch it back into shape by pressing the clay down onto the surface to make a nice flat edge so that your clasp is going to stick to itself on the flat side. Pretty easy for me to do it this way. Not everyone's going to have the same luck, so just give it a try and see which method you might have to use. At least it's going to show you the other way. My magnetic clasp, and it's already been fired. Um, Basically, what I was trying to achieve is a neck, something that went with these beads. I didn't, I didn't want to just throw some random clasp, you know, in there. I wanted to make it look like it belonged together. So, this has already been fired. The magnets are in there for you to see. Now, what I, what I wanted to do is do this in, in two bakings because I want to cover the magnet. So, what I did was I, I pushed the magnet in like Kira showed you, and now I'm going to show you how I'm going to cover them. So let me just move these aside. I want to start with, with now these are very strong, so they're going to just latch right on. <laughs> so I've set them aside. Um, what you want to do is you want to condition your clay, and this is a setting four on the pasta machine. So I'm going to start with one, and I'm just going to set it on there. 
Now you can do it like this, or you can actually, let me pick this up, you can actually tear around it. As, as you saw, it started to, to adhere to my blade. You can just tear around it. And, and that seemed to be the easiest way to work. You can use your blade to help out. And it's actually much easier to do this for me. For me, it was much easier to do this after the clay had been fired because I kept messing it up. And my ma the thing that happened with me is I wanted to make sure that my magnets were the right, the right side was in the clay and the right side was facing out. And Dingy Me didn't think to mark them. So <laughs> this is the way I ended up doing it was, you know, to make them fire it and then add this other little sliver on and then you can just yeah to me I thought I had more more control to do it this way so you know you just have to decide which works best for you you know you can do it all in one fell swoop and, and marking it's a good idea <laughs> and then I just clean it up and make it how I want so now that you have your class done you would you would cover the other side as well and then bake that again so we're going to show you how you can make these same beads in polymer clay classroom and how to make these this set of beads as well so you'll be able to make a few things with it and with the same technique. So come on back to polymerclayclassroom.com and we'd love to see you there.